Hello and welcome back to the channel. This is One Orbit, a channel dedicated to tech reviews, filmmaking, and storytelling in general. This is actually the Bucks Gaming training facility. I shot the very first draft for this 2K professional esports team. Today I'm going to be showing you guys my badass Sony A7S III rig. You know, I'm shooting with the 24 to 105 lens here, so that covers wide range of focal lengths. It's a pretty cool rig that I pieced together with components and parts from small rig. I'm gonna go through each piece and where I got it from. I'm gonna provide links in the description below. If you guys haven't checked out my other videos, please do so and remember to like, subscribe, hit that bell. I got a really cool vlog coming behind the scenes from Pfizer Forum. Check out my unboxing for the Sony A7S III. I guess the first major component was this camera cage. I got this off Small Rig's website. This cage only came with the side handle. I know there's a couple different options, one that comes with a top handle, but I specifically did not choose that one. I only chose this cage with the side handle. And specifically for that reason was this top handle. This top handle is also provided by Small Rig, and if you guys notice, it has this top record button that uses this cable that basically installs on the side of the actual handle. So I'm going to go through on how to install that in a sec. Along with this top handle, I have this swivel bracket that I'll mount in the front, and that'll just install to the last major component, the Atomos Ninja V. So I recently picked this up, did an unboxing video for it. So some last components that I have here, uh, HDMI cable. This is also from Atomos, bought that like in a bundle with the Ninja V. And then I also have a 46 millimeter bracket for the top of the small rig cage. Last component is this HDMI bracket for the HDMI cable. It's super important to have just secures the cable so it's not like wiggling around inside the actual port. You know, you can actually damage it. And really all I have are two extra Allen keys which I'm gonna to use to install all that you see basically. Now one thing that I forgot to mention on this side handle was this also comes with its own Allen key. You might notice some bolts there. Those tend to loosen up on me after really like an hour or two of use. Go through, make sure those are tightened and secure before I even begin my installation process and this will slide in like so and it's it's magnetized as well so it doesn't really drop out or anything inserting the camera into the actual cage you will need to detach your lens this will just slide in really like so and then you'll have to make sure that these side pieces for the the shoulder brace that it comes with shoulder strap get out of your way And the cool thing about this cage is it'll come with a little wrench component that is kind of magnetized along the bottom here. It'll come with that and it'll allow you to thread that, that bolt in. You'll feel the camera tighten in your hands. Secure that piece away. One note about this cage there was like a side bolt that came installed on here and it made it impossible to install the camera so i took that bolt out and i installed it along this component here or this thread here on the actual cage you have your camera cage installed what i like to do next is install this 46 millimeter nato rail and this will be for my top handle i like to start these threads by hand just for, just as a precaution. I, mean, I don't want to cross thread anything on the actual cage. And I'll just secure those here. And then now I can install my top handle. So you'll see or notice these two like retractor pins. Initially, I really had to force this handle in. Initially, I thought it didn't fit, but you really just have to push down on it and they'll kind of retract back and allow the handle to slide in for you there. Then you'll notice this uh, turn wheel here. You can turn that clockwise and that'll just tighten for you. So there's the top handle installed. Feels really secure. Again, that top record button is nice to have. I'll install that cable. That'll be one of the last components that I install. Next up, I'm gonna install this swivel bracket. And if you guys will notice it has this like scroll wheel that will just thread in 
in the front portion of this handle here. And you'll see two pins here that kind of line up with two pins there. And I'm going to install it like this. So I'm lining up these pins. And then taking my Allen key, installing that. You'll notice the scroll wheel here. That'll just thread into the bottom of my monitor. So going to line that up, install that. Like so. Then I have my Sony MPF battery. Uh, it's pretty straightforward. That just goes in the back of the actual monitor. And then next up, I'm gonna install the HDMI bracket. And that'll just install along this side portion of the cage. I'm gonna pull this HDMI flap down. You'll notice two sort of like slits. That'll line up with these two pins and allow you to line those pins up. Then I'll take my HDMI cable. Make sure that's secure in the, in the port first. And then I'll tighten this bracket. Just securing this last piece, making sure that's good to go. And then now I'm installing this cable for the actual side handle. So you'll notice a USB-C port on the actual side of the handle. That'll slide in like so. Pull this bottom flap out on the Sony A7S III. In the very bottom port, you'll notice um, is where the other end installs. There you go. So it's pretty much looking complete. Just this setup alone feels pretty balanced, so you can use it just like this. Pull, focus, um, zoom in and out with your left hand, record button here. Or you can go ahead and install this side handle as the last piece. And I tend to use these two last ports here on the actual cage, lining that up. This part can kind of be tricky because you're kind of doing it one-handed here. But once you have it lined up, you can let go. And these scroll wheels here will turn clockwise. And then I'll just take my Allen key, make sure that's secure. And that's basically my, my setup, so. So you guys see, it's, it's super nice to have. You can kind of shoot with two hands, get some really nice stable shots. You can go one-handed for those low angle shots. I sometimes bring the camera and you still use the viewfinder and have no issues. This top handle kind of protrudes out longer than the actual viewfinder. And sometimes it tends to kind of leave a mark on my forehead. So, you know, it's kind of a compromise. You know, I want that top record button, but the handle is kind of longer than some other options out there. If you guys have a, you know, a similar setup or a setup that you guys prefer, you know, I don't know if you guys swapped out some components, leave those in the comments below. All right, guys, so another thing that I wanna share with you is actually audio. So that's one thing that I didn't really cover with this rig, but for my style of shooting, one thing that I like to incorporate is the use of the Sennheiser ME2, a wireless lav setup. So as you can see here, I have this like wireless receiver which is just connected to the hot shoe of the side handle. And that just runs a 3.5 audio jack straight into the Sony A7S III. And as I mentioned, it's wireless, so I'll just throw this on the subjects, whether I'm doing an interview, whether they're working out or doing some type of uh, physical activity, I find that this audio solution works best for me. I know that might not be suitable for all scenarios. For example, you might want like a shotgun microphone. so. Um, that's something that I really haven't delved into or had to explore with this rig yet. I'll probably be diving into solutions for that in the future. I know Sony has a like XLR adapter that I've been kind of looking into and seeing how I could maybe make it fit. On this setup, there is like an extra hot shoe mount here maybe to, to mount something like that. But like I said, for now, this wireless lav setup seems to work for me. So this is still a mirrorless camera with the DSLR body set up, you know, obviously at heart. So you're really trying to build around that. It's not gonna be as suitable or as convenient for recording audio as say a C100, C200, FS5. Considering, I wouldn't call them limitations, but some of the obstacles, I think this is still a great rig setup. Another thing that's great about this, I have a, a plate mounted on the bottom 
and connecting this to say like a monopod, I don't run into any issues. You know, I have some clearance here at the bottom when tightening, you know, that knob to really secure this, this plate and this camera to say like a monopod or a tripod or fluid head. Really this rig is built for, you know, having this monitor, having the extra handle to get those steady shots and, you know, having that top handle for, you know, some more creative angles, but this does add weight to the rig. And in all, I would say, and this is just a guesstimation, I would say this range is anywhere from like five, maybe to say, I want to say like eight pounds. So I'm going to show you guys how long it takes to basically to get this entire rig up and running. So first thing I'm going to do is power on this wireless lav mic. Now that's not going to pair with, with this lav right away. As that's pairing, I'll fire on the Sony a7S III. That's up and going. And then lastly, the monitor. So the mic's paired, monitor's on, and now I can see my preview. So if you guys can see that screen. So what did that take in total? I'm gonna say probably eight, 10 seconds. Um, not too bad, but um, really I think for your you know, run and gun setup, this rig will kind of have you covered for a variety of different, different shoots. So the only weird thing about this rig is setting it down when you're not using it. So for example, what I tend to resort to is I don't like putting it on its side. That could be an option, but it kind of teeters and, and falls. So I'm gonna put this lens cap back on. I've found for me, what I do is make sure the flip screen is kind of facing in, the screen facing in towards the camera, the protector facing out. And I just kind of lean it back on the viewfinder and the top handle like this. Seems to be pretty secure. I don't want this falling on the like side handle side because you got all of your cables, connections, and ports and don't want to ruin that. But um, I guess that could be another, you know, downside to this rig. It doesn't really stand on its own, you know, especially with this side handle. But that's, that's pretty much it. My name is Jose. I've been your One Orbit Captain. Like and subscribe and hit that bell for notifications for future videos. And I invite you to check out my channel. I got some pretty cool content on there. You know, lots of great content coming. So thank you guys so much for tuning in. And I can't wait to see you guys in the next one. Peace.